Hello and welcome. My name is Jay and today I'm going to be showing you how to make something that's pretty basic but very simple, very cheap to make um, and also I think reasonably effective. Um, it's basically doing desert walls or building ruins. Uh, you could use, you know, you could just do one wall if you wanted it. You could do a whole semi half of a building if you wanted. There's quite a few different things you could do. I just made this one piece because I've made it out of foam board and filler. Uh, filler is spackle, I think, if you're in the US. And that's it. So very cheap, very basic. And um, I'm just going to show you how to make it. If you like this, then do press like. And if you've not already subscribed, then do consider subscribing. And um, as I said, it's very basic. If I was going to make more of these, I would probably use the blue foam because I've got some stuff that's the right thickness. But I'm actually just going to use like five mil foam board for this and some filler. So um, yeah, I'll show you the video and we'll talk about how I actually did it. So I'm doing an L-shaped building here, but you could just do like a big wall or, or a bigger building or whatever you wanted. And uh, what I'm going to do is I take a pen, get some foam board and draw like one side of the wall. So I'm doing an L-shape, so this is one side. Um, once I've cut that out, um, I'm just going to draw, like trace it and cut another one out that's pretty much the same size. It's not going to be exact, but we're going to um, like bevel the edges on it so it's not going to matter too much. Um, and then I'm going to do another wall. That's again, I'm going to do that with a pen, just cut it out um, and then I'm going to trace it over and you'll end up with two pieces of this. You'll end up with two different pieces for each wall piece. So it's four pieces in total because it's five mil. I thought five mil thickness might be a bit too thin. I wanted it to be double that. So I wanted it to be 10 mil. So basically that's why I've got two of the same kind of piece. Once you've cut them both out, we're just going to glue them together in like a, an L shape. And uh, now they're not exactly going to be the exact right size for each one uh, or the exact same, but it doesn't really matter because as I said, we're going to bevel the edges and stuff like that. I'm just using hot glue, but you could use PVA if you wanted to, but it would take you a lot longer. Once you've glued that together, as I said, I'm going to bevel these edges. You want really a sharp blade when you're cutting foam board or when you're beveling because you want it to slice through rather than sort of like drag or scrape the paper because you want nice clean cuts. And I'm just going to shape this, um, these walls to whatever height that I wanted. Um, I'm beveling the edges because we're going to cover this whole thing in filler. I'm not really too worried about some of the card being shown, uh, but you want it to look like it actually belongs together. So um, I wanted it to look like some of the buildings sort of fall off, fallen off and disintegrated, that kind of thing. So you just want to bevel it until you're happy with it. Uh, once I did that, I literally just got another bit of foam board because I you could base the whole thing on foam board. But what I'm actually going to do here is make the interior of the building. Um, and I like that because it sort of suggests that, you know, maybe the floor was raised up on stones. Um, but you don't necessarily have to do this. You could do the whole base or you don't even have to do a base. It's completely up to you. So I just got another bit of foam board, uh, cut out, like traced the inside of the L shaped uh, and then just did a squiggly line where I wanted the building like to, to end essentially. And then you cut that out of, uh, of the foam board with a sharp knife again. Uh, I'm going to use hot glue to do it in the L shape. Be careful you don't end up gluing it to the table. That would be pretty unfortunate. And then we're going to bevel the edges again here so here you can be a little bit more extreme because this you want this to look like a broken building basically uh, what i did is uh, i very quickly um, i wasn't sure i was going to follow through with this but i did a gridded pattern on the actual foam board and um, i didn't take the card off i literally just carved it into the paper and um, with a pen and then a knife because uh, the theory being those i wanted it to look like um you know the stone underneath the sand and um, it's ruined this it's blown over with sand but you can still sort of occasionally see a bit of the underneath um, and i actually do end up weaving a bit but you don't necessarily have to do this part and um, i also took some more foam board and just cut little pieces off uh, and stacked them in a little tr pile and um, that just looks like broken bits of the wall has fallen off you could do more of that if you wanted i only did three pieces because i wasn't necessarily 100 sure how it would turn out uh, but i ended up being happy with that and i just hot glued those in place and then we're literally going to cover the whole thing in filler um all of the walls especially you want to concentrate on all of the walls make sure you're covering all of the gaps um, and we're getting the texture on it as well so we're not trying to get it super smooth um it's up to you how how much texture you want there but to get it on you know you just plaster it on and then you know if you wet your finger you can smooth it and you want it to be really like 
it seems smoother than you think because ultimately um, a slight amount of detail is actually going to be exaggerated when we put a wash on it and paint it and dry brush it and that kind of thing. You don't need a big thick texture that can end up looking a little bit too ugly. Um, for the actual middle part of these um, stones, I very I got a, a small amount of filler and like wet my finger quite a lot just to sort of get a bit of texture if I do have the stone showing through. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to do that as I said. And I want the uh, I want the building to look like it's been covered in sand. So I get some PVA on the interior of the building. Just spread that about where I want the sand to go. I'm using this bird sand that I got from Wilkinson's in the UK. Um, I think I would actually prefer fine sand. This looks a little bit too chunky for my liking. Um, and I just left a little bit of a gap so you can see some of the stones underneath showing through. Uh, but as I said, that is also completely optional. Um, and then instead of like priming it or whatever, because I don't want any issues with spray melting foam but in theory all the foam should be covered um, I literally just get a bit of PVA and I'm using it's desert sand from Vallejo that I've color matched uh, from B&Q you could just use Zandri dust or any kind of thing you want uh, just plaster the whole thing in the deep dark sand with PVA as I said and um, then we're gonna wait till that dries and then I'm going to dry brush it with light sand from Vallejo. Again, you know, just use a lighter colour. You could use skeleton bone or something like that. Um, but or maybe I forgot what it's called. Buff titanium would be a decent colour for that. Um, and I'm going to dry brush it and then give it a wash. I like to do a dry brush before the wash, simply so that it like the wash will tone down the dry brush a little bit. Once I've done it with uh, the light sand, I think I just do pure white, but a very light dry brushing of pure white. Dry brushing, for those of you who don't know, is literally just get a bit of paint um, on your brush, work it into your brush, and then you sort of work it out of your brush so there's not that much on your brush, and then you just sort of uh, throw your brush over it, like, just so it catches the edges rather than painting the whole thing. When well, that's all done, I mean, you could leave it there if you wanted. So I used burnt umber, a little bit of burnt umber in a pot, a lot of water, and it's quite brown. I think something maybe like Serif Sepia might be better, uh, but the brown wash was fine because all I did after the brown wash had dried, went back over with my original colours, quite hefty with the desert sand, uh, the dark desert sand, but not that much with the light sand. And um, that's it, pretty much done. I had a few couple of desert tufts just to make it look like it's over grown and there you have it really simple really simple really cheap desert wall very easy to do um using foam board but you could use blue foam and i might end up doing that if i'm doing more of these myself so that's it guys if i was doing this myself um, i'd probably use my blue foam because my blue foam is 10 mil thick and um I, it would save me having to double up on the foam board but you can't tell that this was made out of foam board really at all um, and the nice little building internal completely optional you could just have it a wall you could do ones with doors you could have another one of these so it's like duplicate like not exactly mirrored but you can make it look like the full building has been destroyed and uh, you could do bigger buildings you don't even have to have the middle bit it's really just the basic simple technique of making a desert wall ruin and uh, because if you look online you can buy these for like reasonably expensive but uh, all you really need is some uh, foam board filler and a knife and you can crack on you can do it and they look fine it looks pretty decent i'm probably going to make some more using the blue foam just because it'd be easier for myself but that is more than acceptable in my mind uh, basic technique but simple and effective you could use this for 40k D D fantasy whatever you want uh, do like and subscribe um, if it's something you make then get on the facebook group and whack it in there i'd love to see it one thing you should definitely do is have a beautiful day and goodbye